When you are producing, usually you're going to want to layer your drums up to get a really kind of thick, full sound that, that you know, where you're, because not, not, a lot of drums, they don't quite hit right, especially if you're sampling a break. Um, so I'm going to take a break, and let's find a break, and then we'll sample a break, and then I'm going to layer some stuff, okay? So... We got, we got for drum breaks. I'm trying to look for like a old crusty break beat somewhere. Let's see what we got. Actually, you know what? I'll do the Ableton search. It'll probably work better. Okay, so I'm trying to find just like a drum break. do okay so um, so let's say you have something that's like a, a break beat right just a fairly you know typical bunch of drums this one's already been time scratched and chopped up and stuff so that's nice uh, it's someone's done some of the work for us but you know you can tell that this drum break is not really like it's not that full on so here let's check this just play right, you can see the highs it doesn't have a lot of highs um, it's not a lot of definition on the, the kick. The kick's not kicking that hard. You know, it could definitely be uh, a lot more tight, you know, but the, the tone of it is nice, but we want to really get this thing sounding like super tight. So what we're probably going to want to do is cut together a drum kit. So I'm going to take, uh, I'm just going to go in here. The warping's not quite perfect. So I'm just going to go perfect the warping. Let's get the snare. I'm only going to take one bar of it for our purposes. Okay, so let's just get that first bar of the break. And then we're going to cut a drum kit out of this. Whenever you're chopping drums in the Ableton preferences, you want to go here to go to create fades on clip edges and turn that off so that you do not have these little fades. Because you can see here, if we show fades, See how it's faded the transient off of that kick? The transient is the first little impact at the beginning of a sound. But now I can do cuts without making fades. Okay, so I'm just going to put cuts on some of these little hits. And see what we got. Okay, so these hits are going to make up our drum. Okay, so um, I like this snare. I'm going to use that one. Um, got two hi-hats. This one, that has a bit of kick in it. I don't want that. So we got two different kick options that are nice. Yeah, I'm going to take this kick because it has that nice long bit at the end, this snare. Okay, so I'm going to just cut together a new drum pattern out of this, and then we're going to build a drum kit on top of that. So I'm going to take this one. I like this one. Oh, wait. It's not going to work, so I'm going to do this one. The, most of the heavy lifting in the track is done by this one drum kit. A lot of people will just continuously ignore drum sound design for like, you know, huge portions of their career. And they'll wonder why 
why their music isn't like hitting people right, you know? And it's like, we don't want to hear you play someone else's beat. You know, we want to hear your beat. Once you know how to make them, and you understand that it's easy because it is easy once you do the chorus, then your tracks are going to be so much more expressive and they're going to have a real authentic texture that is undeniably yours where you can speak and express yourself through the drums. Okay, cool. So now um, I'll just ditch our original channel here. We got our new pattern. It's like cut up and it's a little simpler. I was just trying not to make it too, too busy. So now these, this drum beat is cool, but it doesn't have that much power in the bottom of the kick. What I'm going to do now is basically I want to layer up these drums with some drums that are going to have some more impact and some more body, okay? So I'm going to show you how to make some drums out of Operator here, because Operator is just like a really, really uh, great synth, and you can synthesize drum hits with it that are pretty sweet, okay? So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a kick, okay? So I'm going to put a fixed frequency, and I set the kick to 50 hertz. And then um, on this envelope here, right, we got a sine wave, and then I'm going to FM this sine wave here. Well, here, I'll put it, first I'll put a pitch envelope on the sine wave. So here, let's just, so you see how that's just a sine wave at 50 hertz. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this pitch envelope up. Now you get that swept down pitch. You hear that's like, right? So that, I'm going to put that to there. And then, Okay, so now if I FM this with a bit of white noise, with a thin little envelope of white noise, like this, then you get that feeder, feeder noise. And now here, I'm going to shape the volume of my kick. Right? And then you can get a bit of like an impact, right? And then put this just uh, here. Okay. And then basically under each of these kicks, okay, now if I turn this up a little bit, Right, you can really hear that thing's gonna thump, right? And then when it's into it, I'm just gonna go and get the normal spectrum here. You can see the bass is coming at minus four or something there. But then if I kill this, way less bass, way less impact. So getting a much sharper impact there. Now, if you want to tune these things, right, I'm going to take this channel and duplicate it. Let's find out just, just our kick. I'm isolating just our kick here on this channel now. Okay. Okay, so if I want to find out what pitch this kick is, I'm looking for the fundamental. So now if I mouse over the fundamental here, I can see that this kick is in A sharp and that's at 59 hertz. So if I want to tune this to 59 hertz, I can do that here by just entering 59 on the operator. And now, 
see the fundamentals like right on top of that other fundamental. And you can kind of balance them, like put that down to minus six if you like. But you see it's giving it like a nice, nice body and weight to the kick. Let's just fade the tip off of those. Okay, so this will be our sub, or, or I'll, say, I'll just say kick body. Okay, um, you can also sometimes get a bit more oomph out of your kick if you low pass the body here with one of these PRDs. All right, so I'll just low pass that. Give it a bit of resonance. Let's say 59. Right now, if I put a filter envelope on, right, and apply a little bit of envelope to the filter with a nice short decay, um, and then go add some envelope here. See how that gives it a bit more knock. I feel so great. Um, it's the best decision kind of I made to really take my music skills to the next level. I just feel so much confidence now in the process and just kind of, you know, writing without having inspiration. Like when else in my life I, I, I thought that would be possible. And now I can sit down and have like three, four ideas, uh, four drops, because I learned drops paid the bills. Yes. <laughs> and I can have like four awesome drops done in a day. And that's just mind blowing. See how that gives it bit more knock. Right, so you can have that, um, we'll kind of emphasize the impact of the, of the kick and kind of cut out some of that high end because we're going to add high end with another channel. Okay, now let's get that back up. Okay, so this would be the kick body. Now you can do pretty much the same thing to the snare and get a snare transient. Um, I like to do those at around 200. So I'm gonna say 200 here and then 200 here. Probably a little less than 200, I'll do 100. Right, and that'll put a little knock in the snare. So now I'm going to put the channel here, bring the snare down, copy it two times. Oops, let's put that one back up. All right, so now take the body away. All right, let's go back to the spectrum analyzer so we can see what we're doing. So the snare transient is about 267 on this snare. So I'm going to go, this will be snare body. So to tune this, I'll go 267. And you saw how I did that was by, see there's the snare, and then I just mouse over the fundamental, and it'll show me uh, our 260 in there, 260 um, is the frequency of the snare. So here I'll say 260. And then that way these um, extra, uh, these extra impacts are going to be tuned to the other drums, okay? so. Let's just play again. So this is it without it. And then with. Right, and it's just really gonna make those drums uh, knock through a lot more. So now I'm just gonna mute these layers and we'll go back to this. And then you can kind of like you can adjust the length of the envelopes to, or you can change the, change the shape of them here, change the shape of these extra kind of impacts that we're adding. Um, now I'm going to show you another thing that is a really good trick to do when you're layering drums, and that is to put white noise on both your kick and your snare. Okay, so I'm going to go into operator here, and I'm going to just put white noise, right? and then take an envelope and just put a tiny little needle envelope. I'm talking like 10 milliseconds of white noise. And that's gonna go on both the kick and the snare, okay?
Okay, it doesn't really matter how long this note is, as long as it's longer than the envelope. So, there were, so I'm just adding. Right? And if you look here, see there's all this really nice high end coming in that that sample is kind of lacking. Right? If we check this out here, see how there's not that much up there on the very, very top, uh, you know, up in the 10K to make it bite through, right? Well, look what happens when I add it to just, this is just what I'm adding to the drum kit. Right? So the snare body one, I think I might open this up a little more. Yeah, open up that envelope a little more on the snare. But yeah, so you can really kind of fine tune these elements that are uh, that are coming in on top of the other drum kit and get them tuned and get them so you know they match the, the everything's in the key of your song and that they're gonna um, they're gonna kind of fill in the the impacts like the bottom extreme you know everything below 200 and then everything like up above 10k and then this white noise I would probably want to high pass and have it be high passed around like 5k. Maybe even 8K. Might even turn this up a little. Maybe let's turn up the oscillator. Right, and these layers, they're not really going to draw that much attention to themselves in the mix, but when, here I'll open up the, Right? They're not going to draw that much attention to themselves in the mix. You're still going to hear the drum break, but these extra um, layers of very, very uh, high and very, very low are going to kind of fill in the, the, the extreme parts of the frequency spectrum and make these drums sound a lot nicer. Right? And like if I put, if I were to put like a glue compressor on here, you'll see that it kind of compresses a lot nicer. It's like that.